Welcome students to lesson for exercise 7, uh, solving radical equations. So we're going to solve these algebraically and graphically. Uh, let's, for the first example, uh, let's solve the equation algebraically. This is a, an equation you would have seen uh, in grade 11 pre-cal, um, so I'll quickly just review that. So to solve that algebraically, what you would do, I'll just rewrite the equation right here in black, x plus 4 equals square root. Okay, so to get rid of this square root here, what you're going to do is you're going to square both sides. So we're going to square both sides. Okay, that's going to eliminate this square root because the square root is exponent of a half and this is exponent of 2. When you multiply the exponents, it becomes 1. So you have x plus 4 to the power of 1. So all you're left with is x plus 4. And on the other side, you have 9. We subtract 4 on each side. You get x equals 5. Okay, perfect. That's the answer algebraically. Now, how would we do that graphically? All right. So, let's take a look at the graph. The graph's already drawn for you. All right. So, we're going to sketch the equation of the graph. Y equals square root of x plus 4 minus 3. So, if you guys remember in transformations, this is a transformation 4 to the left. So, you shift 4 to the left. And then you have the shift down 3. And then this, if you remember our, our uh, parent graph, you'd have this point, you'd have that point, you'd have this point. And in this case, because we can go a little further, we're going to go 1, 1, 4, sorry, 2, 4, 3, 9. Because it's square root, it's opposite of uh, uh, square, sorry. So you have 3, 9, or 9, 3, another way you look at it. Okay, and there's that point there is x equals 5. So why is that point our solution? Well, if you think about it, all I did, if I look back here, is I moved this 3 over to the other side, right? So I moved it over to the other side, and then I just made it equal to y. So the solution would be when y equals 0. And that's what we have here. Graphically, the solution is 0 of the function, since taking the original equation and setting it equal to 0 is how we found the above equation. Because if I compare it to the other one, I would have x plus 4 minus 3 equals y. So at the end of the day, you're asking when is y equal to 0. Um, note the zeros, the roots, the x-intercepts of a function all represent the same thing. So you're talking about the same thing when you talk about zeros, roots, x-intercepts. It's the place where the function crosses the x-axis, okay? And often, it's the way we, we uh, represent the solution to the equation, okay? Um, so, are there other graphs that could be used to solve this equation? Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, you, what we could have done, we could have got, sketched the graph y equals square root of x plus 4, and we could have sketched y equals 3, and so therefore we would have had y equals that, y equals that. And any place where the graph crosses would be the solution. And if you would do that, this graph would cross at y equals, uh, sorry, at x equals 5. All right. Next uh, question. So example 2, solve the fol following equation algebraically. So same idea. Okay, so we're going to square both sides again, just to get rid of that square root. Notice that you want to isolate the square root before doing that because it simply cancels it out. So what we have left is x plus 5 on that side. On this side, because you have x minus 1 squared, this would be the same thing. And just to kind of process this a little bit, I'll give you a little thought bubble here. Um, you would have x minus 1 squared is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 1 which gives us x squared minus 2x plus 1. So don't forget, whenever you take a binomial squared, you have to expand it as two binomials and then becomes a trinomial. So here we have x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, so we continue to solve. I'm going to bring this stuff on the other side to isolate, make it equal to 0. Okay, so then you have x squared. You now have minus 3x and you have minus 4 because we subtracted x and we subtracted 5. Got some factoring left to do. So we have x minus 4, x plus 1. And we have two solutions to this problem. We have x equals 4 and x equals negative 1. 
So x equals 4, x equals to negative 1. All right, so that we have two solutions to this problem here, solving algebraically. Um, let's solve the same equation graphically, and we'll look back at this solution in a second. All right, so we're going to separate, to, to solve graphically, we're going to separate the equation into two individual functions and graph each. Okay, so we're going to, like I did in, this, in the last example, uh, I had given you an alternative solution. So these are the two equations we're going to sketch. This is a pretty, pretty easy graph to sketch, right? This is just a transformation 5 to the left. So you take your original graph. I'll just sketch one original graph. This would be our original graph, right? And we're moving it 5 to the left. So 5 to the left goes here. 5 to the left goes here. And here. And you know what? Since I have space, I can sketch one more point. Again, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. And 3, 9 falls, uh, sorry, right there. So I'm going to sketch that other point. When you're solving some, something graphically, you want to get be as precise as possible. So adding an extra point, perfect. Makes it a little bit uh, more precise. And there is our graph. Okay, now this one, this is just a linear function. This has a slope of 1 over 1, and it has a x, sorry, y-intercept of negative 1. So negative 1 here, and we go 1 over 1. 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1. Oh, look, that point came into play. So won't sketch any more points, but I'm trying to give you a nice clean line here. Good enough. And what is the solution to our problem? Well, obviously you can tell this is where the graph will cross. So we're crossing at x equals 4. So solution is x equals 4. Well, why is there only one solution to this problem? And in this problem, there are two. Notice that x equals 4 is one of my solutions. What happens to this x, x equals negative 1? Okay, well, let's verify x equals negative 1 into our original function. So if I was to verify x equals negative 1, I'd have square root of negative 1 plus 5, square root of 4, which is obviously 2. Now, if I try the other side, I'd have minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. Notice that these are not equal, okay? And that happens when you square the function sometimes, is that you're going to create some uh, extraneous roots. Uh, basically, what's happening here is your, this function thinks that you've got both sides of this parabola. So they would be crossing down here when x equals negative 1. So this graph, if you had the other side of this parabola, okay, you would be crossing right here. So... What that means is you have to reject this solution, and the only solution to accept is this one. So it's a step I wanted to come back to after we did the graph. All right, last one, uh, example three. A little bit harder, uh, mostly because of uh, the, the graph is just a little bit harder to sketch. Uh, but we'll solve algebraically first. So again, you have isolated uh, square root on one side. Um, in grade 11, we do a lot of that. In grade 12, we do a little bit less of solving algebraically. So you should be presented with a somewhat easy function to solve algebraically when necessary. So here we square both sides to get rid of the square root again. So what we're left with is, uh, sorry, I'll keep going with the colors I'm doing, 2x plus 1, sorry, 2x squared plus 1. Uh, and on this side, don't forget binomial, right? Binomial squared. So you're going to have, in this case, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, and uh, we're going to bring everything over to the other side. This side this time because we have more x squares than this side. So I'm going to bring everything over here. So what we have left is x squared because we subtracted x squared on each side minus 2x and the ones go away because you subtract one here, subtract one here, cancel out. So you have to equal 0. Okay, so this is not a trinomial, this is a binomial, but you can have a common factor here. So there's a common factor of x. So you factor out x. What you're left with is x minus 2. And you have two solutions here. x equals 0. So when x equals 0, this whole thing will be 0. And x equals 2. Okay. Again, maybe both those solutions aren't uh, valid, but let's check graphically before we verify. Okay, so solve the same equation graphically. Uh, I'm saving a little bit of time for the lesson here. 
but I will describe how I sketched this. I think this linear graph of y equals x plus 1, that's pretty easy. Um, let's make sure we identify the graphs. So y2 is this one, that's the linear, and y1 is this, or sorry, that's not y1, that's y2. y1 is this uh, parabola here, and I say y1, I mean this one. All right, so square root of 2x squared plus 1, uh, what I would simply do is I would sketch 2x two, two squared plus 1, which means you would just have something like this, generally. Again, I'm just giving you a rough sketch. And then I would take the square root of all the y values. And if you square root all the y values, so at right here would be 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Uh, the y value here would be 3. Without. And then the square root of 3 is 1.7. So that's where the 1.7 comes from right here. And then the next point would be uh, 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. And that's how I got all those points. So I won't ask you necessarily to do this too often, but it's definitely good to know how you would sketch that graph. Okay, good luck, guys. And we'll see each other in class.